Hey y'all, this is A.L. Thick Madon and Cinnamon Sugar. And I need to tell y'all about what has been going on over the last couple of hours, the last 24 to 48 hours, okay? So I'm going to try to trim it down because y'all know I get really long-winded and I'm trying not to do that, but things be happening. And then I'm very, very sorry about the other day. I was so tired. I kept forgetting stuff. And then it's just... It took me forever for real to drag, you know, I'm just dragging everything out. So anyway, let me go ahead and get started. So yeah, um, so yesterday was my first day back at work doing what I normally do. Back on the lower grade payroll, if you will. And it's cool, it is what it is because uh, things was going on back there and people was getting on my nerves. I ain't gonna lie to you. I mean, I can endure it for the money, but it was just beginning to get ridiculous and some some things gonna come up. <laughs> we gonna get to that though. So anyway, I had a great day yesterday. I was kind of worried that I was not gonna be able to get back into the swing of things because I hadn't done the stuff that I had been doing for months. So, like I, there are certain things you're supposed to do over there, and I, you know, I felt like I was gonna forget stuff, and I didn't. So I was like, okay, I can be remembering. Okay then. <laughs> so you know. So one of the great things about being back there is as long as neither one of us are off, me and one of the three amigos is going to be back there working together. And we work well together. So, yeah, it's like we usually can sense when the other one needs the other one or I don't have to fear if I need help. I can, you know, straight up just call him like I did before. And for those of y'all who are newer here and don't know nothing about what the three amigos is and who, who they are, that's me and these two guys. So there are these two guys that came in together. They came in like maybe nine months ago, I guess. I know they've definitely passed the 90-day probationary period that they have implemented since I've been there. That, you know, you can't work no overtime um, before your 90 days and all this other stuff, which is stupid because when I came in the dough, if they needed you that day on your very first day of work, when they released you and said, hey, you got your partner that you're working with in this department, you handle one side, the other person to handle that side, we need you. You had the top of the rotation list and you're going to work it, then you had to work. So, yeah, I was confused, but it's okay. But anyway, so, uh, but... Yeah, we are the three amigos, and one of them in particular, he does not work back there in the new department like that anymore because he got into it with somebody that is, you know, considered to be upper management, so to speak, that works back there all the time, but he will be leaving within like a month, month and a half. I don't have no issues with him, but anyway, uh, but I'm usually cool with the other person. Y'all excuse the noise that's going to be going on. Um, there are children who are coming home from school and the elderly couple that live below me, they have a couple of dogs. They got like four dogs and the grandfather right now is talking to one or two of the children and the dog is getting agitated and it's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> That's what's happening in this moment. So yeah, y'all. Uh, and I think that one of their grandchildren drops off their great grandbaby and like it's one of the situations where they using this area as the zone this as a part of the zoning and all that stuff i know a lot of people back home used to do that but i'm just saying it is what it is i ain't finna judge it do what you gotta do to get your child where you need to get them to go so anyway <clears throat> but yeah now he's talking to the oldest grandchild that actually lives here i don't know what that situation is about but he's never with his mama and all that other stuff. I think the mama got some stuff going on. I don't know. It is what it is. But he's a really nice um, young man. Very helpful. But anyway, y'all. So, um, like I said, we, the three amigos, we work well together. But now they've reduced it to just two of us and then one of the other people that already work back there. So whenever we need our break, they come and break us out. What in the world? The dog don't normally go crazy like that here. Like, I don't know what in the world. Anyway, so, um, yesterday was my first day back. It was great. I was running a side that was awesome. Now, I got there a few minutes before him. And so, <laughs> the person that was there, he was like, look, this side has been, 
a lot better than that side. So it might have some issues. And I was like, okay, well, you know, in my mind, I'm like, look, my first day back, I ain't trying to have no issues like that. Hopefully it'll do what it need to do for me. And I ain't got to really deal with no foolishness. So I ended up having a good day and I just went and helped my friend out as needed. And we were cool. We was talking about random TV shows and stuff we watch. And it's crazy because his wife doesn't watch any of the stuff he watch. But I watch like everything that he watch. And so we was catching up on all the stuff like we always do. We just having a good old time like we normally do. So yesterday was great for me. Everybody kept trying to play me. They was like, oh, I can't believe you here. And I'm talking about everybody from all angles, different times of the day. I'm like, man, if y'all don't get out of here. And they really be trying to play in my face. So anyway, fast forward to today. Because today is where people have definitely gotten me all the way messed up. So today I already knew that I was going to be running the side of the department that probably was going to be crazy. So I try to prepare myself before I come in there anyway for whatever I might face. And so when I came in, I was like, shoot, hopefully I'm still back there because anything can happen. Last week, <laughs> after I ended up having to work a whole week in order to get a check, they really did not run for the rest of the week. That place was not operational. So I got my check and them other people ain't getting no check. They was going to have to get unemployment or they was going to have to volunteer to try to get in somewhere else, which was probably going to be impossible because there is an abundance of people on payroll right now. And I'm just like, y'all, why y'all get all these people? Like, why? Like, <laughs> And I mean, it don't even make sense. The, the days and the hours that they had them working because it's like, did nobody need them on these days? Like what? Like, at the time y'all got them, like, no. Like, so anyway, y'all. <laughs> so, now I'm running the crazy side. So when I come in, it is what it is. And I'm just the type of person I need to kind of like, uh, I just had the word. I don't even know why it went out of my mind like that. Troubleshoot. In my mind, I'm like, okay, let me troubleshoot. Let me see what's going on. So I'm, I'm peeping everything. I start seeing what's going on. And basically, if you pay really, really close attention to stuff, even though it's not a hard job, if you pay really close attention, you won't end up working a mule out of yourself. And I already know that the raggedy person that is the maintenance man back there ain't going to do what he's supposed to do. He ain't going to do nothing but come over there and blame you and anybody else that ain't him as to why stuff is trash. And I'm just like, I ain't got time for it. And as soon as he say some sideways to me, I'm going to black out and I don't know what's going to happen if that, if, I, if that ends up going down. Because he really be trying, folks. This is the same man who tried to get somebody who is leaps and bounds better than him as a maintenance man. And then some try to get this man fired. Like, if you don't get out of here, all this sexual harassment and all this other stuff you got going on. And yeah, we're going to get back to sexual harassment in a little while and not even know him. But anyway, they done suspended him months prior. Because of his sexual harassment and stuff going on, instead of saying, oh, you got to get up out of here. Like, you were sexually harassing people at the job. You hadn't even been there a good six months yet. And I had been there for two and a half years by this time. Like, who are you? But you want to come in the door like you know what you're doing when you don't. He literally don't know what he's doing. I can tell him, I'm noticing that this is what's happening with this particular issue that's, this, this particular issue that's going on. And he'll sit up there and just either he'll have the tools that are needed in order to fix it and then try to make it seem like I am the savior. I have fixed it. And like he got a cape on his back or something. Or he'll try to make it seem like, oh, it was it was that person that was over there. Oh, she did it. He stayed trying to say that somebody else is the problem instead of fixing the issues. Because why is something that's not even a good two years old, all this brand new, this is the newest department, this department ain't even two years old. Why everything running raggedy, toe down, as if it's been around for the entirety of this this building. This building has been here. They, they had brought everything over here almost like 30 years ago. And I'm just like, come on now, you making it seem like all oh, this stuff been around 30 some, 40 some, 50 some years, and it ain't. It ain't been two years. You need to stop. But um, today some stuff was going on, and some of the stuff that I had to troubleshoot and I was working with, I was like, no, I already know what the issue is. 
let me try to fix it. And at one point in time, I had to ask my partner to come over there to help untighten something for me because the tool that I had, I had an adjustable wrench. And this particular adjustable wrench does not go out far enough for me to wrap it around what I needed in order to loosen it. And he could do it with his bare hand. I couldn't do it with my bare hand or with a glove on or nothing because my hand weak anyway. This is my dominant hand. And y'all who've been around, y'all already know that I had an accident like a year ago or whatever. Hurt my hand. And I'm, I'm still kind of conscious of that. And I try to make sure I don't do nothing to like re-injure it. And it's a struggle, but it is what it is. And no, I have not done that clay thing yet. I do have it on my list of things to get. And I don't know why I never get it. I think that I'm torn between whether or not I'm going to find it in a store or if I'm going to get it offline. I don't know. But I haven't gotten it and I have not forgotten about it though. But I am going to do it to see if it'll kind of help continue to heal it all the way up. Because in my mind, my hand is at 95 to 97%. But there are times that I do certain things and it can be the most minimal thing that you can think of and it'll kind of get irritated and, and the agitation of it all, I just be like, oh no, I'm scared. And I don't like that. But anyway, so I had to get him to come over there and loosen some up for me. He was able to do it with his hand and I told him what the issue was and, you know, he was just right there. He was, you know, he helped me to get it back going or whatever, because I just couldn't loosen that part up. I knew exactly what needed to be done. I just couldn't loosen it, it up in order to get it to where I wanted it to be. So I did what I needed to do. Every time I went to break, <laughs> the person that broke me out, it just, I just, I just was like, girl, what is going on? I come back all hell to broke loose. And I'm just like, <laughs> it was a lot. And I was just like, well, and I mean, I would get right back over there and do what I was supposed to do. So after I came back from my lunch break, it was completely down. So I was like, what did you do? Did you break this? And she was like, yeah. And she told me, she listed off like five different things that was going on and said she called maintenance. I said, okay. So this heifer came over there. That's a lead. And uh, asked her why was it down and all this other stuff. And so I was like, yeah, let me walk away from y'all, from, from her. Y'all, but definitely from her. So let me enlighten y'all on, on what happened. So prior to the people coming in that were going to, you know, do a handoff, today is the half day. Okay. Remember when I was working and filling in? Today would have been the half day for me, whether I was working on that shift or the shift that was coming in. Either I was going to be getting off at 2 or I was going to be coming in at 2 a.m. this morning to work six hours and then go home as long as nothing popped off. Somebody didn't call out or something like that, right? Well, they come in an hour early, the leads, so they can walk around, see what's going on, get, you know, whatever information they feel like they need to get so that they can be briefed on what's going on, so that they can clue in everybody that's coming in on their shift that they are over. Cool, do what you do. So, I saw that they were over there talking. And so, you know, I ignored her because I already, she already rubbed me the wrong way anyway. I already have heard you know, about how she get down. And I've just made a point to make sure that she never sees me doing anything that she could try to go get me rolled up and, and called into the office behind. Okay. So tell me why <laughs> the lead that she rolled up on thinking that she dropping a dime on me because the help of thinking, thinking she dropping a dime on me, but she ain't doing nothing, but giving me a heads up in all actuality. So she over here thinks she dropping a dime and she'd have told him, well, you know, when she was back there filling in, she was on her phone a lot. Ma'am, you worry about the wrong thing. You minding my business when you need to be minding your own business. The people you need to be dropping a dime on, you ain't doing it. Let's talk about the man whose spot I took, okay? The man, the main person's spot that I took. Guess what, y'all? And I've known this for quite some time, but, you know, I'm just saying since somebody wants to try to drop a dime on me, like I tell y'all all the time, people are always worried about me when they need to worry about themselves and the other people they need to be dropping a dime on. So the man who just came back like a week, week and a half ago, two weeks, whatever, he started texting her. Now, keep in mind, he works basically under her. He started texting her outside of work, which some of us do. We get on social media 
or we text one another or we do both. Well, he done texted her and started texting her inappropriate stuff. He's married. She's married. She might want to cheat, but she does not cheat, according to her or whatever, as far as how she doesn't cheat. I just heard some things that it, she just be giving off that energy like she just be feeling like, oh, I don't want to do that to myself and I don't want that karma, so I'm not going to cheat. You know what I'm saying? Just to be out here doing as the Romans do, as the people say, even though, you know, I ain't even get into that either. But anyway, so he's texting her inappropriate stuff to the point of where it was sexually harassment. It was sexual harassment type stuff going on. Like the information that she shared, she showed it to other people and they were like, Girl, why you ain't go up front? You need to go up front. What is going on here? Like, take this up front. He fired off rip. Yeah, I don't do no work, y'all. I done told y'all. I told y'all when that man came back, that man pulled up a chair from somewhere and did like this and sat there and watched everybody work. I was like, what is that? At first, I ignored him because I was like, oh, well, you know, he had surgery. And even though he's been out for quite a few, few months, you know, maybe he need to sit down from time to time. But no, the majority of the day, he did just like this, went, pulled up a chair, sat down in front of the area where he could see both people that were working and did this and just watched. And I was just like, what is going on? I'm so confused. But yeah, like I said, she has damning information. You have damning information on this person. He needs to be fired, just like that maintenance man should have been fired <laughs> almost immediately as soon as he got hired, but we ain't gonna go there. But yeah, this man should have been gone. This man should have been gone, but you over here worried about me on my phone. Now, keep in mind, she's never caught me or saw me on my phone, ever, 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 ever. I have never been on camera, in front of a camera while I'm on my phone, so I could literally lie if I wanted to and say, I don't know what she's talking about. Could you please f pull the, the, the footage? I could really lie and get away with it. Because she's never seen me do any of these things. And I don't do it in front of the camera. Unlike a whole lot of other people. There are some people that literally live on their phone when they're in there. And don't do no work and get behind. And you can tell what's going on. Oh, but me, when I got on my phone, it was because I was bored. There was nothing going on. My work had already been done. And I wasn't living on my phone. But like I said before, she had never seen me. She had never witnessed me on my phone. Now, we could pull our phone out and do something real quick and put it back up. But we ain't supposed to just live on our phone, which I wasn't doing. There were times I might be on there for like 30 seconds or more or whatever. But it was not me living on my phone. But, you know, I already know what it's hidden for. Because the dude I told y'all about who live at home with his parents... Is the one who be dropping dimes because he do the same job. He's the only one who sees it. And I already knew. I already knew what it was going to be hidden for. I, it was just a matter of time. I just didn't know how it was going to come about that I would find out that it was happening because that's the only way that you would know. Because you're the only one that I work with that drop dimes on people, sir. I already knew what it was hidden for. And she ain't got eyes everywhere. And like I said before, you're not going to be able to pull any camera footage showing that I'm doing any of these things. So, yeah, he would go and find her and tell her what everybody was doing. And I'm just like, please get out of here. <laughs> please get out of here. So you over here trying to drop a dime. Y'all excuse me. She over here trying to drop a dime to somebody that I'm cool with who whenever he see me, he get happy because he already know it's going to be a good day because you know that I'm going to set it off. You know I'm going to do my job and then some. You already know you're not going to have to worry about what's going to happen over here because I'm on the job. Then we would be so happy to see me. It don't make no sense. So, like I said, <laughs> you people people kill me because the people they be venting to and telling all my business to come and tell me 99% of the time. So, before the end of the day came when he was going to leave out at 2, he came to me. He was like, yeah, I just want to let you know she came up to me and told me that you was on your phone a lot. I was like, I ain't been on my phone today. And he was like, oh, well, she probably was talking about when you were back there working and, you know, filling in. I was like, she ain't never seen me on my phone. But anyway, I ain't even finna get into that. And he just started laughing. He was like, he ain't even that serious. And see, he, he, on the other hand, 
He, on the other hand, has seen me plenty of times on my phone. I saw him out of the corner of my eye. And I didn't care because he didn't care because my work was done. How you gonna sit up here and be like, oh no, oh no, you're on your phone. She, she's, she's on her phone all the time. No, you, 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 you doing too much. That's not what's going on here. You doing too much. Cause there's some people that literally walk around with their hand, with it in their hand all day and do all that. No, I wait until my work has been completed and then I get on my phone to do whatever I'm doing. You're worried about the wrong thing. Why don't you take that man up front? who been sexually harassing you. How about you do that instead of worried about me when my work is actually done? You over here mad because goals aren't being met, but you know, <laughs> where I'm working at, it ain't having to do with why the goals ain't being met. So you worrying about the wrong thing yet again. I just, when I tell y'all, I and see, I be so glad. I be so glad that even before I found out how she was, some kept telling me, mm-mm, I don't think I could ever trust her with any type of personal information. That's why I would never tell her about my mama. I would never tell her about none of the death and stuff happening in my family, my cousin having a stroke, none of that stuff. I wouldn't dare. I wouldn't dare tell her nothing. Oh, you seem down today. Are you okay? Like when everything was going on my lymphedema, I told the supervisor and he told me he didn't even want to know no details about it. He just trusted that I was telling him the truth. And that if anybody had a problem with me coming to the, the meetings late, because that's what we do, that then, okay, uh, if they had an issue, then he would fix it. Because he already knew. Because I came to him and I told him what the situation was. I was willing to explain to him in depth what was going on. But he was like, do whatever you need to do. You know, he lived for me. And what's funny is yesterday... My first day back, this man rolled up on me and was like, hey, how you doing? You're back over here. Oh, my gosh. You can do this, this, and this. I don't think he's ever seen me in this capacity before. And so he was like, oh, my gosh, you can do this, this, and this. You can do everything. This man told me I need to put in for a lead position and was dead serious. And I started laughing. And he was just like, yeah, you, you need to put in for that lead position. I'm not doing that. Um, <laughs> I'm not doing that. But I'm just saying, like, you doing all this, girl. People be wanting me to go and do things. Girl, I, I just be like, see, this is why. This is why. And I was just like, see, there are times that some tell me you need to shut up. You need to shut up. You need to shut up. Don't say nothing about that. Or if a situation is going on, some will tell me, ooh, don't don't even say nothing. Just be quiet. And I'm glad <laughs> because mm -mm, I can't stand two-faced people. Be real. Be real. And then the the what she should have done, had she actually seen me doing something, which she's never done, because I always can see her way before she see me, then she should have came to me and gave me a verbal warning, which has never happened. Nobody's ever given me a verbal warning except for one person. I had one write-up, and it, that was inaccurate then. Y'all, I told y'all about this. I had gotten on my phone because my alarm started going off. My alarm was supposed to go off at 5 o'clock p.m. Because I do notifications to kind of remind myself of stuff. Because I really will forget. If I don't set an alarm for it, I'll forget. And so I had the alarm go off. It was at 2 a.m. or something. It was supposed to go off at 2 p.m. or 5 or one of them. Some of that. Something like that happened. It started going off. I said, oh, oh my gosh. So I'm fumbling, fumbling, fumbling for my phone. Pick my phone up. I see the heifer at the corner of my eye coming up the floor. And she was a good distance away from me. But my alarm going off. Even though she really wouldn't have been able to hear it like that because it's a loud environment. I was like, oh no, let me turn this off. I literally turned my alarm off and put my phone back down. So then she going to say, you know, you're not supposed to be on your phone, right? I was like, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm aware. And then she told me what she wanted, went on about her business. Then all of a sudden she got on the radio later. I was like, hey, I need you to come to the office, da 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 So the dude that used to work there that got the two kids that I don't really talk to like that no more, he had texted me and told me he had gotten written up for being on the phone. Now, earlier, way before she had ever came over there, he had texted me something and I texted him back. But again, nobody saw me. So 
I'm usually aware of what's going on. Like you got to be stealth or you had to have been that supervisor who got fired that was like taller than most basketball players to see over everything to see me. Cause that man used to see me a mile away, like literally for real. Like <laughs> he's the only one who's ever caught me red handed doing something on my phone. But he's never turned me in because I do my work and it ain't even that deep. I was all, My work has already been done. Like, please get out of here. But yeah, that heifer ain't never caught me doing nothing. So yeah, y'all. That had like pissed me off. I was just like, girl, the people you need to be dropping a dime on, you ain't dropped a dime on them yet. Get out of here, child. So I was just like, ain't nobody got time for it. So yeah, today I ended up running the crazy part of the department. And like I said, I paid attention to everything. And when I came back from my lunch break, I don't know what in the world that woman did, but my whole side was down. And maintenance was supposedly on the way. That heifer came over there that's trying to, you know, drop a dime on me. She came over there and did some stuff or whatever and got it back halfway running or whatever. So I was like, I don't care. I ain't saying thank you. I ain't saying, like, I'm not going to say nothing to you. Unless you say something to me first, I'm not speaking. Like, it's to the point where if you don't say good morning or something to me first, I'm not even speaking to you once I know you're two-faced and trash and all of that. So I ain't said, hey, about nothing to her. Oh, but yeah, like I was telling y'all, when all that stuff happened with my lip lymphedema, one day she gonna try to act a sir. Are you okay? You look sad. Because like I told y'all, y'all, I'm usually like really chipper, really happy, all of that. Like my energy has usually been, you know, people tell me all the time, my energy and all that is infectious. I'm being myself, but when all that stuff was going on, coupled with what my mama got going on, because I really do still think of that stuff, even though she always is in good spirits, I think of so many different scenarios, and, and sometimes I, I, I don't know where I'll think like, dang, it's been a while, I wonder if she's going to try to get surgery, if she does try to get surgery, Will she survive it? Will it actually reverse it? Will she stay the same? Will she die on the operating table? You're like, I, all this stuff be coming to my mind out of nowhere. And so I just isolate. I just be like, oh, I'm so glad I ain't got to really work near nobody. So I can just process whatever in my mind is going on at that time. So I came in there one day and I was late to her. <laughs> that man told me as long as I clock in on time, Shouldn't nobody have nothing to say to me because that's what they're going by. And I said, oh, okay. So me and the supervisor are cool and she just want to find something to have a problem with. Like, girl, you going through hell at home from what I was told. You need to worry about that. Again, minding everybody else's business but her own. Like, please stop. So anyway, um, but yeah, it's it just... I just don't be understanding why people want to mind your business instead of minding their own. You need to tend to your own business but yeah anyway so she had got everything back up and running and i was like oh, okay i did everything i needed to do and i called everything back up and it's as if nothing ever happened because i know what i'm doing every time i went on my break all hell break broke loose what they got to do with me because i did what i was supposed to do while i was there so child when i tell y'all i was just like Play, man Excuse me. I was just like, man, if you don't get somewhere, y'all excuse me. I had something to drink before I got on here. Not no alcoholic beverage. Not no alcoholic beverage. Now I'm over here. Got the hiccups. <sighs> so, but yeah, people really be trying me. And I just be like, y'all have nothing better to do. Oh, so the one thing that I was going to tell y'all was, guess what I mean? <laughs> so I looked at the schedule. I was like, Ooh, y'all, that raggedy heifer is finally training. And at first, the way they had it on there, I was like, oh, I'm finna um, set it off. Because the way they had it on there, they basically were trying to tell us that she was training back there. But I was like, why they got it right here? Like, the way they had it, it was weird. But anyway, it was basically to indicate that she was going to be training, but she was training on day shift like everybody's supposed to do because i was gonna set it off because they always say oh no whenever you're doing anything you got to do it on day shift which i think is stupid i feel like whatever shift you're gonna be mainly doing it on or whatever or you can alternate do whatever you're gonna do but they make it seem like whenever you train for a position it has to happen at this time of the day and i'm like why 
when most of the time y'all know y'all gonna have me taking the spot of the people that work at night that don't even make no sense but anyway y'all so ain't nobody got to deal with that raggedy helper then some of the new people have already gone to day shift too so it is what it is but yeah y'all i'm at the bottom of the rotation list but y'all thank y'all for tuning in bye